Uh, I'm Peter Deval. I'm uh, the head of BMW motorci Motorcycles in the US. Cool. And so, Peter... Is that loud now? I loud think enough. so. Probably, it, never, it never hurts to be louder. So, um, so, here you've got this scooter that you just launched today. Are you talking about bringing to the American market? And BMW is not traditionally known for scooters. So, what inspired you to bring a scooter to America? Let me first uh, answer it by taking a worldwide view. BMW is big in mobility, both on our car side as well as on our, now with the scooters, uh, because we know that there's a need, and especially a future need, for me mega city commuting. And that is obviously what the scooter is going to cater for. Um, the scooter is specifically built for the European markets. We predict that about 70% of our sales will be in three countries, only being Italy, France, and Spain. And uh, what I'm standing here, our brand new scooters, which takes us into mobility, is a typical BMW interpretation of how we see the scooter market. Uh, both scooters are at the top end of the market, so these are so-called maxi scooters. Uh, the, the specific one I'm at is called the uh, C600 uh, Sport. And the scooter over there, which is a more luxurious version, is the C650 GT. Uh, the Sport is meant for shorter commuting and uh, very agile, sporty riders, as you would typically find with most of, most Italians. You know, the Rossi has to be. And then the the GT is a much more luxurious scooter, uh, much more space, better wind protection and is meant not only for city commuting but also for open road uh, typically again to use the italian scenario uh, you use it in the week to commute in rome and then over the weekend you go for your famous holiday destination which is maybe 100 kilometers away mm -hmm. cool so where do you see the american scooter market going now that the baby boomers are starting to age and maybe move away from motorcycles do you see new riders coming into the scooter market well, we hope so. What we, what we do know about scooters per se, whether it's America or not, is that most people who buy a scooter does not consider a motorcycle. A motorcycle is a leisure item, they buy it for fun and for their own private time, whereas a scooter is more commuting thing, so it's maybe an alternative to using a car. Mm -hmm. Uh, in America, we know uh, that the scooters are pretty much in specific pockets. Here in LA, uh, then there's uh, uh, Florida, for instance, Tampa, Miami, also New York. Mm -hmm. So it's clearly uh, in areas which is firstly hopefully warmer and secondly high congest congestion. Don't forget San Francisco, where I grew up on a scooter. The, they'll be very sad if you don't mention them. <laughs> I have to then sadly not leave San Francisco. Yeah. yeah. Um, we not that sure exactly how big scooters will be in the US. Mm -hmm. But what we do know is that there's a very clear trend or correlation between scooter sales and the fuel price. Mm -hmm. When the dollar uh, when the price of uh, our fuel went over four dollars a gallon, the scooter sales peaked, and as it came down, the sales diminished again. And uh, if you plot these two lines, there's a very clear correlation. So if you're rather a pessimist and you think that in future the fuel prices in the U.S. will be high again, then there's clearly a very bright future for scooters. What is the fuel efficiency on these scooters? Are they both about the same? Yes, MPG. they're pretty similar and they, they will give you typically uh, about 60 miles a gallon. That's great. That's depending on how you ride. Absolutely. Yeah, my R1 is much less than that. Um, but that is the way you ride it. <laughs> yeah, there's that. Uh, so the next question is, um, these are automatic or are they trans manual transmission? They are both automatic. Okay, a great. scooter has to be. There are certain things that sort of define a scooter. Yeah. It has to be automatic, it's got to have a step through, it's got yeah. to have good wind protection. So yeah. uh, at least BMW understood what the rules are to play by and uh -huh. we did that and then after that we did our own interpretation. Exactly. For instance, this one's got a variable storage space. So when the scooter uh -huh. is stationary, you can drop a compartment, compartment inside of the scooter and therefore have more space for your helmets and so on. Oh cool. And um, so I think the next question is, uh, my
dream is to get more Americans on the road on two wheels. So I think by partnering with MSF, by getting people involved in training, I know some brands are really heavily involved in MSF. What are you doing to try and get more new riders excited about maybe coming into scooters? Is it, is it on? Do you feel that's part of your job as, a, as now a scooter sales company or? I think it's part of our job, whether we're a scooter company or not. We are very heavily involved in training people. We take a very responsible uh, look at safety. For instance, I mentioned earlier today that BMW now is standard with ABS across the board on all our motorcycles and of course the scooters as well. But we are involved in the uh, Safety Foundation, MSF. And uh, we uh, have started now with various uh, um, dealers to encourage local training. We also have got two off-road academies, one on the west and one on the east coast, where we teach people how to ride off-road. Uh, and that is part of our whole drive to also promote the GS or the off-road lifestyle. And 